Over two-thirds of India's cultivation takes place on dry rain-fed lands, which are prone to drought, soil erosion and depleting groundwater. To help increase rural incomes from these arid lands that are home to millions of India's poor, the World Bank supported India's southern state of Karnataka in pioneering a holistic, multi-sectoral approach to watershed development in seven of its 30 districts. Between 2001 and 2009, instead of adopting top-down solutions, the project sought to implement well-planned, demand-driven soil and water conservation activities and develop rural livelihoods. Objective criteria supported by satellite technology were used to select and prioritize the sub-watersheds to be treated and draw up action plans. This was a good practice and an innovation. Transparency and accountability were ensured through writings on walls, public open house meetings and ongoing monitoring etc. On the lower reaches of watersheds which are normally used for agriculture, measures were introduced to check runoff monsoon rain water which carries away the fertile topsoil and allow it to percolate into the ground to recharge tanks and wells. These measures included building field buns, contour trenches, check dams, percolation tanks, farm ponds and other water storage structures. On the upper reaches of the watersheds, open fields were brought under tree cover to intercept rainfall, reduce soil erosion, bind the topsoil and increase biomass. Fruit trees were grown to assure good incomes for farmers from lands that had largely been laid waste. Farmers' field schools helped farmers to diversify crops and select the right fertilizers. Hands-on training was provided about integrated pest management, soil and moisture management, integrated crop management and eco-friendly methods of farming. High-yielding breeds of livestock were introduced, reducing grazing pressure on unproductive lands and increasing incomes. Trees and grasses were cultivated to increase the availability of water and fodder to ensure higher yields of milk and meat. Water bodies created under the project helped introduce fisheries, generating additional income and improving nutrition. While watershed programs generally benefit landowners, the project developed new livelihood opportunities for disadvantaged groups, especially for women and the landless. State-of-art remote sensing, GIS mapping and information technology were used to monitor impacts. As a result of treatments on the upper and lower reaches of watersheds, water resources increased by a net of 51% after the project and 80% of irrigation wells were rejuvenated. The availability of water rose from four to six months in a year, enabling farmers to diversify their crops, cultivate crops throughout the year and increase crop yields. The $119 million project benefited nearly 400,000 households. Household incomes increased by about 40% for small and marginal farmers by more than 50% for the landless and close to 80% for larger farmers compared to control groups. Migration reduced by 80%. 14.84 million man days of employment were generated. Biomass, fodder and fuel increased significantly. Waste and fallow lands improved. Milk yields rose by 20%. There was reduced animal mortality and a rise in standards of living. Project beneficiaries are now better informed and equipped to maintain their water resources and practice more sustainable farming and more than 80% of the self-help groups continue to function. The project has won five prestigious national awards and two international awards. Lessons learned have been adopted by other watershed programs financed by the central government and helped shape new national policy guidelines. The Sujala project has been visited and studied 
by representatives from various countries for its innovativeness and scope for application.